Yo, what is popping, guys? It's time for the last battle. I, uh, I'm gonna play on Oris. It's time for the ITL final season four. Um, it's our third appearance in a row in the finals, and we want to take the title for the third time in a row to um, basically show everyone and prove why we are the best Oris League player of all time. Gold himself, obviously, and we're packing some heat. Just like let's just say that in advance. Um, if you like, have trouble with warm weather, right, warm weather right now, which I don't think you have, because it's winter and shit. But if you're like, if you're cold or something, like just get closer to your PC because I'm gonna turn some heat on here for my team builder for the ITL finals. Uh, I built a very very cool team um, versus my good friend Sebastian and. Um, his Montreal Montfernos. Um, his YouTube name is Blue Victini, same um, on Twitter. I'll definitely link it down below or whatever. Uh, very cool guy, very smart player. Won Coach of the Year two times in a row. Lost to me last year in the finals. He has an overall record of like 36 to 4 in each format play, so definitely a very, 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 very solid opponent. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm very hyped to play him because my team looks great. I hope it turns out to be like. A Dawn squad that can take the title, obviously, but his team is very threatening as well. So I guess we should hop right into it. Um, let me put his team on here. There you go. So looking at his team, he brings Mega Venusaur, Rotom Wash, Entei, Ladias, The Fable, Greninja, Yuxi, Ditto, as Cavalier, Porygon Z, Golurk. Um, very very solid, bulky, um, offensive balanced squad, I guess. Um, not a lot of setup sweepers or um, Stall Mont, I guess, and besides Mega Venusaur, which can always like recover up on basically everything. But um, overall, there's like some very solid offensive threats in the Entei, Porygon Z, which is a which is a trouble situation. The yes, Cavalier, the Greninja, and the Ladias, like, all of them can be very annoying offensively. And obviously, he has the favor, which is like the Hex God himself, the like the mother of OU in <laughs> sixth gen. Um, hope it's not as good anymore. And, because this thing is annoying, he six out me with that basically in week five because I got some uh, because I got a lot of hacks versus me probably like I could have could have won this game could have been a closer game but it's whatever. Um, very decent squad. Um, I don't really know what to expect but obviously just like always, I build a team that can beat his entire uh, like every combination of six he wants to bring versus me or I at least hope I build a team that can be just that. Um, so the first one is. The first one I'm bringing is the only mod that's not like at least to an extent heat. Like um, the most heat mods are probably gonna be my Porygon 2, my Dragonite, and my Talent Flame. While um, Wimps got a new are like decently, decently flames, I guess. But all very heat squads, so be hyped for that. Um, I don't really know what to expect. I'm 100% sure the Fable is coming. I think the Entei is coming as well. Um, Rotom has to come because um, I have a lot of bird spam on my roster. So um, we should definitely bring that. I expect a ditto, but he didn't bring it in week five. Mm, like he basically could bring everything, but I don't see um, Dola coming, and I don't really see Oxy coming again. But um, he might bring Oxy if he doesn't want to um, pack rocks on Clefable. So, but like yeah, he definitely could bring everything. Like every mon on his team has a case. Uh, it's making a case to come versus me because. Um, all of them match up well versus certain mods on my squad. Um, but it's fine, I guess. We can deal with everything. And the first one I put on my team is the Alamomola, my girl Mallory here. Um, didn't come to any of my games in the regular season, but came to the um, conference finals and will come to the finals. Um, basically, the same as last season where um, I had just Alamomola as well. I didn't bring it to any of my regular season games, but it came to all my playoff games and played a crucial role in most of them. Like, Got some very crucial damage or status off on someone. Um, was able to wish protect up and stuff and just be annoying overall. And um, looking at his, his squad, he has some trouble breaking through it. Um, obviously, Clefable can use it as setup fodder and um, as well as Polygon Z. But uh, besides Rotom Wash and Venusaur, he doesn't have like direct answers to it. Um, Specs Ladi can obviously be a threat, but I have a lot of speed efforts to see. And, like, I will go over the set real quick. Um, the spread here is to take on Entei basically. Um, it's, besides Rapira, it's my only counter to, or like hard counter to Entei. 
or at least to a band at MSA, I would say. So um, I wanted to make sure that my own Momola can like, handle it all the time. Um, with this spread 132 HP, um, I hit a leftovers number, which is cool, plus one obviously, 256, it gives me like, what, 16 or 17 HP back every turn, or maybe 15 or whatever. Um, no, six, 16 HP I get back every turn, so that's nice. Um, and with the 140 defense, I'm guaranteed to um, never be too KO'd by a bandit stone edge after stealth rock, after burn damage, which I could potentially take from a sacred fire earlier, and after leftovers, leftovers recovery. So even if I'm burned, I can take um, two stone edges after rocks from Ante, which um, basically allows me to stall it out um, of every, every single one of the stone edges. Um, stone edge, obviously, it does only have APP, and Ante like, only runs like moves that it moves that have very low numbers of HP, so I can always stall out the ante. Um, leftovers obviously are here to get like um, health back, to like, just be able to um, check certain threats better. Um, I cannot switch into a bandit as cavalier sadly, but this set was an AV as cavalier or like a leftovers as cavalier, like whatever he wants to bring, so that's cool. Um, this set allows me to not be weak to Ditto as well. Um, just like I didn't weak five for build a team that can, where every mon can take on Ditto, or that I have an answer on my team for every mon Ditto wants to copy. So if you want to basically copy my Pokemon 2, I have a check for that. If you want to copy my Dragonite, I have to check for that and so on. So um, that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, with the Spadef investment, I'm like, able to take two life orb Dracos from Gladias. Um, if he's not modest, um, I don't think he should run modest, but he did it in week, one, one, uh, week five and he might do it again. Um, allows me to take on Greninja if it doesn't pack the grass and there's not like specs or something. Um, obviously it's not protein Greninja, so grass mod will not to KO me if it's not specs or modest or whatever. Modest life orb might do the trick. Um, I, I can't take every hit Mega Venus so once to throw it in, even if he's Modest max special attack. Same with the Rotom, unless it's like a Specs or Life of Modest variant. Um, I can take a Solar Beam from Entei, even if he's Modest max special attack, and Life of in the Sun or something. Um, I have a chance to live a plus 6 Moonblast and kill with Mirror Cloud from the Cortable, which could be really nice um, if it comes down to that, but I obviously won't let it set up to plus 6 um, if I can somehow play around it. I li if any hit from a spec spawn on Z and like just kill with mirror cloud, get my regenerator back up so that um, he never is like able to wear it down if I if he's like locked in into anything. Like I could be the spec Ladias with my Momola because I can always switch in and like gauge the damage, switch out again after he's a minus two or something. Um, switch into side shocks and bullshit like that, so that's kinda cool. Um, he can, like he cannot build a choice set, the choice set that can um, take on my Alomomola. Choice Bandit Ante doesn't beat me. Choice uh, Specs Ladias cannot beat me. Choice um, Scarf or Choice Specs the Ninja has like not a good shot at beating me because if it's locked into Grass, I can just switch out into Talon Flame or Wounded Card or whatever. Um, choice Bandit as Cavalier yes can beat me, but it has a chance to get burned, and I can like switch into Bandit as Cavalier anyway. Prospects program Z cannot beat me um, unless I obviously switch in. But um, I built like I have two U turners on my team, which hopefully allows me to um, pivot into everything and then like see what damage he wants to do and bullshit like that. So I'm not too afraid of that because program Z is also what by my program too, as uh, if you will see in a second. So um, Bennett Golak yes can do a lot, but Ben Golak is absolutely trash versus my team, so it won't bring that. Um, like it's the only one I'm sure he won't bring, but you never know with him. He's a very smart player when it comes to team prep, so you never know. He might bring like a suicide lead with um, focus dash, stealth rock, and like dynamic punch to get some confusions off or something. But I don't really expect it. So um, Alan Mola here can basically is an overall solid wall which can like do tremendous damage with mirror code if I like. Let, let him hit me with, um, if he can rain from Venusaur with a Volt Switch. Um, if Rotom wants to Volt Switch out on me, or like if I go, go out into Alumomola on, Volt, on uh, Rotom, I would just stay and go for the Mirror Code once he decides to um, 
brought with art. Um, I will probably protect the first card and anyways brought him to see if he wants to willow with me, which would be fine. And then like I would mirror code on his um, on his vault switch the next turn. Um, it's my switching to NT 100% of the time. I can always wish up the damage, um, pass wishes to all of my members because only like all of my mods have like recovery besides um, when we've got a meme. But um, I'd rather have them at full, especially if I have have to switch them into rocks with my um, dragon knight on my seven flank, for example. Wish can always be helpful to get back to multi scale or just get back to full with seven flank, which obviously does not appreciate rock. Um, Anomomola also can take a plus six um, side shock from uninvested Uxie. I'm pretty sure if it's Calm Mind variant, so I can just kill with Miracle to turn out um, he wants to attack me. Um, ditto, like, cannot touch me anyway. We could just stay in all the time, and I would win because I have more TP. <laughs> I can just call it with the auto um, scar TP or whatever he wants to go for. So, um, a little more, a little more Mola here. Um, very, very solid mon in this matchup just because it can take any one hit he wants to throw at me. Um, besides the specs t bolt from Rotom, but um, besides that, nothing on his team can auto me, so that's really, really great. <laughs> Obviously, I have to play carefully around some stuff because I don't want like Porgon D to be a substitute, Nasty Plot Attack, he can always easy PZ to um, like lift. An invested skulls or live a, uh, live a surf or live a waterfall and then like set up a sub on me and nasty plot up. But I doubt he will bring that. That um, if he brings a setup, it probably will be double dance with try attack and then um, the coverage move that would hit my normal resist, which or even this which would be my mega sable eye or my um, Valkyria. So yeah, that's our molar for you. And now we turn like you always. You know, I most of the time I always like start with my um, most of the time I start with my wall core. So let's just hop into the next peak mon that I'm bringing in that will be part of my wall core, and that's my Porygon 2. As you see, Iron Tail Return Recover Conversion Physical Offensive, but especially Defensive Porygon 2. And this set is designed to take on Karma and Clefable one versus one, 100 percent of the time. Um, with conversion, I basically if I put Iron Tail as my first move, which I will do, I turn into a Steel type um, once I use conversion. So I can come in on Clefable, um, take the T wave if he wants to go for that, or like just let him get to plus one, Conver um, convert on the next time to a Steel type, um, where he goes to plus two, and then like hit him with an Iron Tail, which is a guaranteed to a KO on a max max um, defensive Clefable with my analytic ability. That's why I have the min speed on Porygon 2, because I want to be slower than Clefable. Or speed type if he, for whatever reason, brings a uh, brings an un, uh, brings a non-speed to the table. Um, so he doesn't have any reason to do that, but if he does, so be it. Also allows me to basically hit everything on his squad um, for harder damage because of an analytic. Besides the Escavalier, obviously, and Escavalier can never like Escavalier probably won't run um, that much speed to outspeed me. Um, I would be really surprised if he does. Because like you need some bulk to take um, hits better, especially like fire type attacks, HP fires from some stuff, um, maybe like a weak fire blast uh, or flamethrower from Mew or from a DD, um, DD Dragon Knight or something. So I don't really expect him to run that much speed. Um, with the conversion iron cell, I could potentially convert into steel type before a cavalry can attack me, and then I. Like it just wallets endlessly. Um, drill run, if it's banded, can do a hefty chunk to me, yes, but if it's banded, I can just like recover up to see like if I'm already still type. If you really want to go for the um, drill run move, and like then I can switch out and like basically abuse it as setup fodder with one of my birds here in the end. So that's kind of cool. Um, the spadef allows me to take two plus six um, moonblast from Clefable if it's uninvested, which is amazing. And I will always like just speed with Iron Tail um, unless I don't hit like two Iron Tails in a row, which I hopefully will always do. <laughs> he could potentially um, install me out of Iron Tails with soft balls and shit, but then again, I will like I can just click return and like, force him to soft ball up. And like if he's out of soft balls, he basically loses the game anyway with his Clefable, so that's kind of cool. And um, I've trick on my Mew with his Charles Gas, by the way. So I can potentially like switch in on the right turn and then trick the favorite to make it completely useless and 
gonna get shut down by Polymer 2 anyway, so that's kind of cool. Um, the steel something overall is pretty great because Venusaur cannot poison me with Sludge Bomb as well uh, either. Um, Rotom will do like the same damage, that doesn't really matter, but um, that's kind of cool. I absolutely wall a Ladias, even if it's a Stax Ladias, one time a steel type. So um, I basically could potentially um, switch in on a Draco with my Alamomola, um, take like 60 or 70 percent. Um, switch out into program 2 to um, get the regenerator back and then I could just convert, um, see what it's switching is and wall whatever wants to come out so that's obviously an anti um, which by the way would take like 40 to 45 percent from a return on the switching so um, you cannot, cannot even like come in on me um, that safely. Um, Greninja cannot break through set either unless it's like banded low kick and even then it has like not a good chance to to KO me, I'm pretty sure. Um, didn't run the card because he like probably like he, there's no chance he will bring um, Bandit Greninja anyway, so that's cool. Uxie cannot touch me as well. Um, cannot beat me even if it's a Calm Mind variant that goes to plus six. And with the um, Step Iron Tail, I would just like break a break a substitute all the time if it's like that kind of variant. So that's cool. Um, Ditto can't touch me either because. Um, Iron Turn Return will be um, resisted once I'm once I'm um, converted into Steel type, so that's great for me. Um, Porygon Z cannot break through me because um, with the Spideff investment, I'm never too KO'd by anything, unless like obviously a nasty core variant. But then again, I could just go for a return to like 50% of that, uh, 50 percent and like put in range for an Acrobatics anyway, so that's great. Um, Golak obviously can too KO me, especially if it's a band set. But I really, as I said, I don't expect Golak so. Um, my heat pouring on two set, I expect it to put in a lot of work, especially if he decides to not bring the end then he just like, has a lot of, like, he has a really, really hard time to beat my, um, Porygon two. And it's basically, it's near, nearly impossible for him to do that, and I don't think he realizes that, um, he probably thinks that he can, like, beat me down with, like, a Carmine Clefable, which he probably thinks, um, Porygon two is set up for a Prof. Clefable, which switch into it. And once he sees the conversion, he's like in the in the world of trouble. I'm pretty sure about that. So um, yeah, I think I came up with a real cool set here. Um, really, really expected to put in a lot of work with them, but we'll see about it. And obviously, I have to be careful that I don't get burned um, by Rotom Will O Wisp or a Skull from Green Ninja. So I have to like not switch in, um, not switch Porygon in on those two um, because. That would like completely shut me down versus Clefable. I need to be like not burned to beat Clefable with the Iron Tail. So I have to be very careful about that. But I can always like pivot around, let something like Whimsy Card or um, Alamola get burned, and then go from there. So I'm not afraid of that, <laughs> to be honest. I could like change return for a Tri Attack. I might do that. But um, overall, the damage is just better. But I might change it to um, try attack just to just to be sure and like just to like hit stuff that resist steel hard even when I'm converted into a steel type. So we'll see about that, but um, I might like keep it that way anyway. Next up, I have my Muya Wallace, the MVP of this season. Um, not only like in my opinion, but it was actually named the MVP, so that's kind of cool. Um, choice guard variant, trick, defog, u turn, psychic. Um, psychic basically, psychic u turn basically hits everything for decent damage besides the escavalent. I'm not sure if he brings it. Um, like, psychic does like at least 35 to 40 percent to everything, which is very good damage considering he does not like have a good way of recovering up with any of his mods besides the Fable and Venusaur. So, um, yeah, it might be hard to like, or it might be easier for me to whittle him down with like a max special attack, monikin. Um, spam psychic or like and just like do quite some damage to some stuff that wants to come in like um yeah that's like basically the sense behind having psychic just a solid step move that could case Venusaur which is great um again I don't really expect Venusaur because it's like set up for the for some stuff it doesn't tank anything well on my team to be honest like it doesn't wall anything that like I'd like to bring with him probably so I don't really expect it, but you never know. Um, it's good to have. It's good to have a that can good KO Mega Venusaur regardless of the set he runs. So that's great. Obviously, if he's max specially defensive, I'm not too KO on it, but 
why would you do that? Like, uh, there's, no, there's no reason for them to go make special defenses because then Eternal Flame or Dragon Knight would just like Oko or Sewer KO it depending on life stats. So we'll see about that. Um, Defog is here to get rid of rocks. You see, I have Dragon Knight and Eternal Flame at the back, and I need Dragon Knight to be at full when I switch in, and I need like the Eternal Flame to be able to come in, come in on full to take some hits, <laughs> just like I want to. So um, we we'll see about that. Um, Trick is here, obviously, as a backup plan to deal with the Clefable. If I really expect him to go for Carmine, I would just go hard into Mew and Trick pick the pick this bit of Choice Scuff. But I really want to keep my Choice Scuff for as long as possible. Um, my Seth Gecko here will always be the um, will be the initial switch into Clefable anyway. But if I get a chance to trick it, I will just do that. Um, trick could also be helpful on Yuxi or even Rotom if it's like a rest talk variant that you brought the last time you played. Um, could be helpful versus Cavalier <laughs> if it's a banded variant to be honest, because the band could like be a very annoying set versus me. But obviously, Seven Flame switches into that very well. Um, uh, Psychic Yuxa does like quite some damage. Yuxa, even with its nature, does like 40% to Zeninja, 45 ish percent, and just like 30 to 40% to Latios, which is very good damage. Um, last time he didn't peg Root because he brought a Spectre, and he does that again. Um, he doesn't have a re reliable recovery on that, and he basically um, gets wheels down rather easily. Um, Mew will probably be my lead in most matchups, depending on what I see. Um, I might leave Dragon Knight and try to go for the sweep earlier. I might leave Whimsicott because both are new and Whimsicott can use an out of there and like I can see what they want to do, uh, what he wants to do with those mods. And then. But um, Mew obviously is a very clever choice of leave just because I probably outspeed everything. Um, I'm I have enough speed to outspeed max speed Polgar Z. Um, probably won't bring that, but just to make sure I outspeed it, which in my opinion is the fastest Scarfer he will bring. So. There's that. Um, if he brings the scarf to Ninja, so be it. The Ninja will probably just go for like the Dark Pulse, which I can always tank if it's like a scarf variant. And if he brings the scarf Ladias, I mean, like, probably won't, won't just U turn out, but I will just like, go hard into um, my girl Mallory here and into my own Mola and see what, and see what I can do from there. But um, most of the time, we'll just go for the U turn turn one and like see um, how he plays around my mule, like he. Probably will have trouble identifying my set, and then if Theater comes in, yes, he will know I'm Scarf, but who gives a fuck because um, Ditto with my new set is set up for the, again for um, my Dragon Knight, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, that's my new set here. Um, Defog is very crucial. Cool, so I have to get a keep rocks off the field to like give my two birds a chance to win in the game in the late game. So like, I would have loved to pick another move, maybe transform or something, but. Um, I just can't. Like, it's, I have to have Defog on on a mod that like is not Dragon Knight, and the only mod I have with Defog is the Mew. So <laughs> I have to run Defog on that, but that's fine. Um, I don't really need more than Psychic and Yuta. Um, next up, I have my Whimsicott Choice Specs, um, Moonblast, Yuta, Hurricane, Memento. Um, I run Timid Max Speed, not because he has one fifteen base mod on speed, which he doesn't, but because he probably expects me to only speed creep his Ladias. Because um, I don't have anything on my team that can outspeed Greninja besides the Jolly Talent Flame, which I won't bring, as he knows that. So um, he probably won't run max speed on Greninja, or like not even close to max speed, and he won't run enough speed on Greninja to outspeed my Winter Cut. Um, the last time we played, he brought 180 speed on Greninja, which was, was enough to um, speed creep a speed creep for Ladia, and I expect him to maybe go, go to 181, maybe 182 if he's really like. Imagine, like, if he really thinks I will speed creep Ladias harder than I need to, but he, I don't think there's a chance he will bring 185 speed just because he, if he is a mixed attacker, he will um, lose some, um, what's it called, some two chaos on some of my mods, um, depending on how he, like, puts the rest of the EVs in a set and if he's, like, depending on his item and stuff. So I don't really expect him to bring a Greninja that um, here to outspeed my Wounds Gun and can just. Use an out of there or kill it with a Moonblast, which would be great. Um, Moonblast and Hurricane actually 2 it KO the entire squad, uh, like his entire squad, besides the Fable, um, AV as Cavalier, or like very bulky as Cavalier. And um, 
ante, so that's really great. Like I can just spam Moonblast and Hurricane and see what his like the initial switches is. He will know that I'm specs um once I go for my first move, but if I go for U-turn first or like just like his Venusaur with the Hurricane, he like he will uh, if I go for U-turn first he won't know that. He probably will think I'm scarf or anything, maybe with Switcheroo to um beat the table and like I can play some mind games with him there. But if I go for Moonbus or Hurricane, he obviously will know that I'm for specs. But that's fine with me. I have to prank some memento here because I think it's it can be crucial to um set up a sweep with um either Talon Flame or um Dragon Knight in the late game. Um like on at minus two for example Clefable cannot break my substitute which I have on my um Dragon Knight. I'm pretty sure but like it depends on the set obviously and I can I could potentially always get rid of a plus two to table if I have to. Like I could get it back to zero and then like try to beat it with my challenge plan, which can obviously do it. Um, with my two setup sweepers in the end, like you probably are surprised why I have setup sweepers um, when you can run underwear to table or um, choice gap ditto, but both of both of them are designed to like beat ditto, and I don't really expect. Um, Clefable to be unaware, even though I think unaware Clefable with Calm Mind would be the best set he could bring versus me, just because my team is very setup heavy. But um, if he lets me toxic it or will it with it, it's just like very, very hard for him to win with it. So um, I really expect Clefable to be his win corner. He won't risk um, it being unaware, I guess. But you never know, but I like have ways to beat the Clefable if it's unaware anyway, because I have my Porygon too, which was it anyway. So. I'm like not too afraid of unaware flash. Um Whimsicott here, very very solid offensive mon can Oko a bunch of stuff like Gladius is O code after like one life or pit if it takes one. Um Rinza is O code. Uh, Mega Venusaur takes like eighty percent from a hurricane, um if I have so that's cool. R like Rotom is pretty killed, and they takes like forty four percent from a spec hurricane, I'm pretty sure. Um Clefable takes like forty percent like over forty percent from a Moonblast if it's like max max physically defensive. Hooksy obviously can't take any hit, but I can always use an out. And like Ditto with Moonblast use and Hurricane can never break through um, my Porygon 2 anyway. Or even through my Talon Flame, which is great. Um Porygon Z will take a bunch and I will like whenever Porygon Z hits the field I will just probably attack it with whatever is out there because Porygon Z can actually be a threat to me to my team, so I have to like Really play around it because if it's a dual dance variant, I could be in trouble if it's like just nasty plot with like T wave support from Clefable or whatever he wants to do, or Tailwind from Ladias. That could be that could mean trouble for me, but um, I will definitely try to play around that as well as possible. That's Whimsicott for you, my girl L Driver. And now we're turning up the heat a little bit more because now we're going to my Dragon Knight here. Fly substitute Roost Dragon Dance. Um, with a very bulky spread um, that I will explain in a little. Um, the reason behind here is his only um, his only um, flying type resist is the Rodom Ward, and Rodom Ward loses to the set. So um, step fly basically kills everything once I get to plus four or plus five. Um, both EVs and attack allow me to kill Yuxi at plus five, like if it's like a max HP and not like um, max physical defense or something, but like. It's just like I didn't need them anywhere else, so I put them in attack. Um, because they allow me to occur some stuff at plus five or plus three or plus four that I would be able to otherwise. Um Max HP obviously on max max HP allows me to do the leftovers number plus one because I don't want to be quite KO'd by um stealth rocks basically. Um one twenty two speed again to speed creep uh the ninja that wants to speed creep my speed creep for Ladias at plus one. <laughs> um 44 speed death and 36 defense allow me to take um, Hydro Pumps from Rotom behind the sub, um, Voltrope from Rotom behind, behind the sub, Sludge Bomb from Venusaur behind the sub, Sacred Fire from Entei if it's banded behind the sub if I am at full, and if I'm like plus one behind the sub, I can roost up to full and not have my sub broken. Um, also, he has a very slim chance to break my substitute with banded extreme speed if he wants to go that route. Um, to break it, like it, like you know, it has like to get one of the four highest rolls to break my sub. I'm pretty sure. Um, the 44 speed death EVs actually are here as well. 
like just to make sure a minus six Ladias if he decides to stay in. Minus six Ladias cannot break my substitute from full with um with a specs mod as Draco Meteor, I'm pretty sure. So kinda weird, but um like they are necessary for some stuff, so I can guess that's kinda cool. Um non specs Polygon Z cannot break my substitute if I'm at full with a try attack, which is great. A Cavalier cannot break my substitute from full um with Mega Horn if it's locked into that or a knockoff. And Ditto cannot copy me once I'm behind a sub, so I'm um, keeping up a sub will be very crucial. This set um has a very good chance to fail, but it also has a very good chance to win, especially if he allows me to set up a substitute and get the plus one versus Rotom Wash or you see the like the two months that I'm like that I could set up the best besides a Mega Venusaur. Set up the, the best arm besides a Mega Venusaur. Um, with the Memento support, I'm like basically guaranteed to get up get up a free sub unless I like Memento if you fail. But even then, like I can drag dance and hope he doesn't go for the um, Thunder Wave. Like I have to play some mind games to see if he has Thunder Wave. He didn't run it the first time. Um, if he doesn't run Thunder Wave on Yuxi, I can just like get to plus six um, on that thing if I want to. Um, I like the thing with Dragon Knight is the last time we played. I brought um, a specially offensive modest Dragonite with Hurricane, and Cliffable was his initial switch into that, which would have taken like 75% from a Hurricane, but I missed it. So, um, like, that was like the only way he was able to beat my Dragonite with Cliffable was dodging Hurricanes, he got it, and six out me with Cliffable. Don't want to have, don't want that to happen again, so I think he won't go Cliffable the first time Dragonite comes in. He might want to go into a Yuxi, which maybe wants to attack the, um, the HP Ice. HPIs from Oopsie, if I'm at full, cannot break myself right away if he's uninvested. Um, or he like, wants to go into Ditto to see what like what I can do, but I can always just like substitute or drag lands up on that um, if I'm not like DD it up again, and I will never allow Ditto to come in on a plus, on a boosted Dragon Knight. <laughs> to be honest, like that won't happen. I guarantee you that, like, I'm not like letting that happen. But even if Ditto comes in on the boosted Dragon Knight, he has to go for Fly, which would allow me to substitute. Um, Stall his five, um, his five um, fly PPs, which he only has with Ditto, and like he can't even beat me with Ditto. So <laughs> that's like just, just amazing. If he like allows me to set up to plus two, plus three, Ditto comes in, I will just go for the substitute, and he knows he's screwed. <laughs> so um, that's very interesting. Um, if you, if I get like in on Entei on a like on a Memento, because Entei seems like a very smart switch into uh, my wound because if I can get Entei. To minus two with my um, with my wounds recording set up on this. Um, obviously, I need to not get burned. So, um, like that's the game you play, I guess. But even if I'm burned, I can get to plus six potentially and can like boost off damage and yada 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 and definitely kill some stuff. Um, I need to be at plus five. I'm pretty sure to two K or Rotom if it's if it's max physically offensive. But I can do that at, at plus four um, depending on depending on the set. Like I don't think he would bring Max, max defense, like he likes to be very creative with his, with his spreads, just like I am, because like he knows he only needs um, so much defense to basically take on my Mammoth Swine or my Talent Flame or whatever. I don't think he will prep for a plus six fly from, or plus four or plus five fly from a Dragonite, so I have a very good chance of beating that. And I can always, like that's another great thing, um, Rotom Wash, which actually is his flying resist, um, I can set up on it because I cannot break my sub. Unless it's like a very offensive variant, and then like it's way easier to easier to whittle that down and set up on something different. So <laughs> that's great. Um, that's my Dragon Knight here. Hope the set puts in the work. Mm. I can see it just losing to some stuff, but I can also see it um um what's it called? See it like just straight up six O in him if he like plays better around it and like lets him set up on an Yuxi or on a Greninja that's locked into Skull and if he doesn't get the burn or whatever. Um, if, if he lets me set up on Entei and doesn't get the burn with the sacrifice, if he lets me set up on Mega Venusaur. Um, like it would even be helpful if he sees the leftovers because then he would know like that Mega Venusaur can potentially um, take the physical attack like Outrages or Dragon Claws, which um, it wouldn't be able to versus a Banner Dragonite. But, um, I hope to come in at full because in multi scale I can take some hits easily. I set up a sub, DD up behind the sub, boost off the damage, or get up get up another sub and 
go from there. Right? Um, not going to be easy to set up 2 plus 1 behind the sub, but um, it's definitely possible and I hope I can pull it off. Because once I'm behind the sub and at plus 1 and he doesn't have a scarfer that outspeeds the plus 1 Dragon Knight, which I don't really expect him to bring, like the only scarfer I see coming is Ditto and Ditto can be, can be this, so that's cool. And yeah, if I'm behind the sub and the plus 1 I win the game. So like that's like what I think will happen or could happen if I like make it work with Memento on some stuff or whatever. But um, yeah, we'll see about that. Um, hope hope this thing puts in the work and just destroys him. <laughs> Next up, we have Talent Flame. Actually, the same spread I bought in week five. Um, enough to take every two hits from um, what's it called from Escavalier. Enough to outspeed Torridon Z. Um, enough for death to um, never be too KO'd by Mega Venusaur Sludge Bomb if it's uninvested. Yada yada yada. But the difference on this set is, um, I don't bring an item again, I brought Acrobatics and Roost the last time. This time I bring Sword Sense over Volca because I don't feel like I need the um, defense that much because it's more of a wall breaker or late game swing player which I can like, I can sweep a plus, plus two once I um, get rid of Rotom, once I weaken Cliff Table a little. So um, that's the thing. But I have Quick Guard on here. <laughs> Why do I have Quick Guard? Obviously I have it for um, the Ditto. If Ditto wants, like if he lets me, if he just says, Screwed, I have um, Ditto in the back and maybe an Escavalier that's locked into Mega Horn or Iron Head. Um, he says, fuck it, I'll just let him set up to, um, to plus 6. Um, hope, like, to, um, hope to get damage off so that he's not a surprisingly Sash variant with Acrobatics or anything because plus 6 Acrobatics even without um, the yeah, non-item boost could potentially kill a, a Scavalier depending on his spread. Um, like if he just like thinks um, last month Ditto can win versus last month Talon, I can just go quick guard, stall off the 550 of Acrobatics and win. <laughs> That's basically the only thing I could, the only reason I quick guard for. I don't need a fourth move because um, with the moves, the moves kind of then gets a ton of break through um, Rotom anyway. I could potentially go like with SV natural gift grass but um that's a very solid chance he's a scout for that and that would like mean um i have to kill rotom with the natural gift first before i can use acrobatics as well as i want it to work so um, that doesn't make sense so i'll go quicker just to beat um a scout ditto that wants to come in on me and if he makes the mistake to let me get to plus six once rotom is done then try to beat to counter sweep me with ditto um He's just like screwed. He could potentially quick out himself all the time, but I have more PP than he does. He has only 5 PP on all his moves, so I will win the game. <laughs> Which is amazing, obviously. Like, if that works out, it would be also very heat, and it would be fun to be like a FEMA professional VGC player, uh, which he is, um, with quick guard talent flame in singles. Like, that would be really cool, and I kind of hope that works out as well. But. Um, yeah, that's the reason behind that. Um, I don't need any more attack to beat stuff at plus 4, plus 6. Um, even if I max attack, I cannot beat uh, Breakthrough Rotom um, at plus 6. I can, like, can never beat it. So, who needs it, right? Um, if he doesn't take platform and Venusaur, that's just absolutely fed up fodder for me. And, like, I could potentially like revenge kill some stuff in the mid game with Acrobatics without revealing my entire set, which would be cool. Hence, yeah, if he goes ditto on my boosted talent flame, he loses the game as well once Rotom is down. So that's really, really great. Um, Porygon, Porygon Z dies to plus 2 or plus 4 acrobatics, I think to plus 2 already, depending on how much um, how much um, HP or defense he runs. Should, like, should just die to plus 2, plus 2 acro or plus 4 acro, I'm not like sure anymore, but I will definitely cult that during the game. So um, that's the squad. Hope you enjoyed my team that I hear. Let me know what you think, what you would have done better, or what you think would have worked better. But um, yeah, that's the set. I hope you guys enjoyed the heat, and I hope the heat works out in the battle. Like, if that works out, you can call me like MV 2.0 or something, like as the better version of MV when it comes to heat. Um, my boy said here, Joe has to be shiny, obviously. Um, Everything else is shiny, it's nice. So, yeah, that's the squad. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope um, 
you are as hyped as I am to see um, a Quickguard Talon or a sub DD Fly Dragonite sweep versus the Montreal Montreal as we try to get our third title in a row in the ITL, a league that I take a lot of pride in. Um, I basically like every year I'm guaranteeing I win I win it, so would be would be dumb if I don't do it this year, but um, it would be fine as well. Like he was in the finals last year or last season, is in the finals again. He deserves the title just as much as I don't should be a good battle. So definitely go check out my buddy Sebastian and yeah, catch you in the battle. Thank you.